Hello, everybody. This is Sam Simon, also known as Dementia Man, for the uh, Dementia Man blog for the week of uh, November 17th. And I have a special guest. You can see him right here, Mike Zwindel. Did I get it right, Mike? Are you close enough, Sam? Close enough. And Mike, uh, I met uh, because I was introduced to him by Eli Lilly Company. They said, he was working on something I cared about as well. And if you've seen the play, you know this. I've also, I think, blogged about it once before. We want to, Mike wants to change the word. I want to get rid of the word that starts with D, dementia. And um, we're in different parts of the country and that have some in common. So, Mike, if it's all right, I will do a little bit of your background. And then I'll let you introduce more yourself uh, because I think it's, uh, oh, I, let me do it this way. I might actually have to let you uh, um, introduce you. Oh, I know how to do it, I think, here, because it said I can't minimize mine, but I can certainly come up to it here. And here you are. Um, so, uh, and we're going to, by the way, um, mention this and it'll be on online on my website and uh, the website to find out about all of this I'll say it early on right now not demented.com right that's and correct <clears throat> we're gonna glad to find that we will repeat it and we'll let <clears throat> find it and actually so Mike um is a person who is very prominent in the Alzheimer's world, but he's that way because um, he's you're a businessman. You have a business. You're you're in Des Moines, or you you're from Des Moines. I think you're in Des Moines now, um, Iowa, and uh, you've gone through a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment and um, early stage Alzheimer's. And um, through that, you've been uh, become an activist. I love that. That's part of, I call it myself a troublemaker. Um, that's also an activist. Um, and that you're now on uh, uh, the uh, patient advisory committees of the Alzheimer's Association. You've become very prominent in that work, not just uh, in the Midwest, but nationally, and you participated in clinical research. You are doing very well at this point. I'll let you describe how you feel about that. But you've come to, and, and you'll perhaps fill us in how you came to the idea that the importance of changing the language around which um, people with these diseases this disease or there are other cognitive diseases. And then maybe we'll we'll see if you have a word we want to use instead of the D word. But tell us a little bit more than that about yourself and the campaign and how you've come to this. Well, Sam, thanks very much for inviting me. I really, really appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak uh, whenever and wherever I can. But uh, my story, my personal journey begins with my parents who both had Alzheimer's disease and um, I was their caretaker and they both passed away from Alzheimer's disease. So I was obviously very concerned and, and worried <clears throat> if I was going to develop a disease. It took me about five years to come to the um, um, decision that I wanted to find out what was going wrong. And uh, we all have moments in our life um, that changed our course of life. And, and mine was actually a very simple one where I was looking for my phone and I couldn't find my phone. <clears throat> and um, I went down to the garage and see if I left it in the car. And uh, my home has five stories to it. So I went, went back up to the uh, main level and uh, couldn't find my phone. I went to my office, couldn't find my phone, went up to my bedroom, couldn't find my phone, came back down to the garage, couldn't find my phone. So I said, well, I called my, I shouted out to my wife. I said, you know, um, 
um, would you mind calling my phone so I can find it? She was upstairs. She said no. So she called my phone and the phone rang and it rang very loud because Sam, I had been holding my phone in my hand the whole entire time. So that's when I said to myself, well, I've got to get serious about you know, what's going on in my brain here because I was concerned. Um, so I sought out uh, some treatment at one of the best centers in the United States and um, took me a while to get in into their clinic. But um, at that point in time, I was diagnosed with um, uh, memory loss and they wanted me to come back to, to further refine the diagnosis. So I came back and they diagnosed me with mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's disease. That diagnosis was based on a three-hour neuropsychological exam and a beta amyloid PET scan. So subsequent to that, to make a long story short, I started um, taking um, uh, immunotherapy, uh, intravenous infusions once a month with a drug called um, Aduhelm, Aduhelm. And um, I've been on that for three years and I just finished my 36th and last infusion. And my um, uh, 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 team at Banner Alzheimer's Institute, where I go, has now told me that I have a normal brain. I have a normal or below normal amount of beta amyloid in my plaque. Mm. And if they were to look at my brain scan today without knowing my history, they would not diagnose me with um, uh, an excess accumulation of amyloid or with cognitive impairment. So um, in a short haul, that's that's been my journey. Um, and it's been a very successful journey. And, and one of the things I want to do is give people hope, not false hope, but real hope that we have treatments available today, okay, that can stop this disease in its tracks, we hope, okay. Um, but it all depends on early detection. Yes. And so why aren't people getting early detection? One is because of the stigma that surrounds dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And I felt there was a stigma, but I didn't know if it was just me, Sam, or, or, or does every, anybody else feel this way? So uh, on my own, I commissioned a 1,000 person survey across the country of people who are 65 years and older, demographically um, um, correct, corrected survey. And I found out some very important things. One is um, the emotions associated with Alzheimer's disease, and specifically, we asked about dementia. Well, I don't have it in front of me, but we're sadness loneliness, okay, and agitation, all right? So that's those are pretty negative emotions, and, and that's part of the stigma. So the next question that was really important was, um, does the disease, does the use of the word dementia, do you feel causes a stigma? And the answer was yes, okay? So that's still fine. People don't like to be called that. But the, the, but the proof statement was, has this stigma from the use of dementia delayed your diagnosis? Okay. 70 to 80% said yes. Now, when you do a survey, if you get a 40% agreement, that's huge. This was right. 70 to 80%. So we do have a real issue of people not wanting to get early detection due to the stigma caused by the use of the word dementia and demented. And I don't separate those two words, okay? In the English language, you can't, okay? Um, demented means having dementia. <laughs> and if you have dementia, the adjective is demented. demented. <laughs> so I've heard people say, well, we, we say dementia, but we don't say demented. Okay. Well, you can't do that. Right. Okay. You can't, you can't do that. They're, they're hand in hand. That's like saying, I play football, but I'm not a football player. It just doesn't, it, it just I, doesn't. I, I want to, I, I'm going to interrupt you briefly to, if I might say, first of all, just to let you know, but and uh, the audience know, my, my journey was almost exactly like yours, um, that I started having 
symptoms, not quite having the phone in my hand, driving on the wrong side of the road, not knowing where I am. Um, and then I had a something very weird. It was like I had a black wall in my head and I, I felt like I was floating nothingness. I got a diagnosis and um, diagnosed. And, and you know, I think I, what's really important about our conversation is this, is it just dementor, demented? It may be, there is this huge tragedy narrative and um, you're living uh, proof and I hope I am to a degree I've been in a drug trial. I, I'm still amyloid positive, but I don't have uh, the tau tangles. And that's a drug I'm trialing to prevent that. But we can live meaningful lives with this disease. And, and particularly the early diagnosis. Um, just, I want to hear some more about the... You, I heard you say earlier, you're an activist. I'm a troublemaker. That's in my play. And I say I was born a troublemaker. Four sisters, three older than me. What else was I going to do? But I worked <laughs> for, you know, I, I worked for Ralph Nader at one time. I've been, that's my career. But being an activist too, there's so much we could do. But so, so as you, you, you were prompted to do this survey and tell us a little bit more about it how you're now addressing it and trying to, um, and, and I am curious, I think I know, but what it is besides sort of organizing what steps we want to see happen around the world. Okay, thanks, Sam. Um, so after I got the results of the survey, my question was, you know, where do I, where I proved my point or verified my point, okay. And uh, where do I go next with this? So um, I joined up with a um, very prominent um, uh, consultation advisory group out of Washington, D.C. And they were uh, pretty much focused on uh, nonprofits in the Alzheimer's world and nonprofits in the brain health world. And, and um, things of that. So they're very, very astute, you know, in, in how to approach this. And um, uh, so we decided to go ahead and set up a non-profit organization, okay? And um, from there, um, we, we, we wanted to be advocates to change the D word, demented dementia. And so that was the impetus of we needed a, a framework upon which to move forward, okay? Um, my first incline, inclination was, um, let's go straight to the Alzheimer's Association. But we thought it would be better if we could develop a base of very important, influential other groups to come aboard, okay? And then that way we could bring our case to the Alzheimer's Association and say, hey, look, we've got Alliance for the Aging, we've got this and that, we've got this and that. Um, so it was very, um, that's sort of how it started. Uh, and that was just two months ago. Um, so we have everything set up and running. Uh, we're now in our fundraising phase because um, all these things take time and, and money to uh, reach out to the right people and get in touch with them and to have an organized group. We're in the middle right now of setting up a, uh, a, a an advisory committee. And I have, a, right now I have four very, very prominent people in the Alzheimer's world. Um, um, one from academia, one from a nonprofit, one from a uh, uh, innovation center. And um, so we're going to have a really uh, sounding really well thought of board um, uh, to, to, to give us um, some, um, uh, what do I want to say, some clout, if, 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 if you will. So our go forward strategy now is to start influencing um, various numerous organizations in academia, in uh, pharma, 
and the nonprofit world, okay, in the, in the advocate world. And so far, we have had a fantastic reception. I just got back two weeks ago. I was invited to go to Lausanne, um, Switzerland, to speak at an international Alzheimer's um, research conference. And I was allowed to speak about the initiative there. I was the only right. non-researcher there. And um, everybody was on board. And there were 130 uh, researchers from 25 different companies. I had the executive vice president of neuroscience from a major, major world pharmaceutical company asked me what he could do to help. And um, uh, there's another major pharmaceutical company in the United States has already, because of this initiative, started to scrub um, um, dementia. You can from, say that. Which one? From their website. It's Lilly. Okay. Lily. And they're very helpful. Um, we've had a nice response from a major research center where they have now started to phrase it Alzheimer's and related diseases instead of Alzheimer's and all other dementias. Okay. So, so, so that's a simple change. Can I cha challenge? Can I challenge you with the same challenge I get? Because remember, sure. in my play, I do it. I get yeah. two challenges. Yeah. If I hate the word so much, how come I call my play "Dementia Man"? Yeah. And well, the answer is it's the word at the moment. Uh, yeah. I'm be glad to change it. Yeah. But then I I'm asked, well, what word, other word do you want? Now, yeah. when, when I talk and every day, and when I'm asked that, I say, I have a cognitive impairment, cognitive disease, yes. a challenge. Um, you know, and you had also mentioned that um, I think I learned it from you that the government had stopped using and may well not use the word retarded. And I would think getting the government to get on board on this, if they're not already on board. Um, well, they're, they're not on board. They're not on board. I'll, 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 I'll tell you that. Um, then we need to do that. Yeah. But you know, the, what the, 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 Medical world is in the sense that DSM-5, the medical book for neurological diseases, doesn't use dementia anymore. They changed it, I think you know this, 2013, to yes. neuro, neuropsychological disorder, major yeah. or minor. Yeah, yeah. So in 2006, I believe it was, there were two phrases in the, in the D, it's, it's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, and it's what you uh, diagnose all um, neurocognitive diseases with, and then you take that diagnosis and submit it to the insurance company. And so that's extremely important. It's like if you've got five out of these seven symptoms, you have minor depression. So it's, 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 it's the Bible. It gets revised every four to five years, six years. So in 2006, they removed two words from that Bible, okay, of diagnosis, because they were causing a stigma and because they were um, discriminatory. One word was mental retardation, okay? They replaced that with intellectual disabilities. And they went so far, the support groups then went so far as to get Congress to pass a law called Rose's Law, which prohibited the federal government from using the phrase mental retardation in any federal publication, okay? When I was a mean little kid on the playground, you used to call someone a retard, okay? I'm ashamed of that, but that's just what we did in middle school, okay? The other word they removed because of the stigma was dementia. Unfortunately, that never got any traction, and it is still considered today to be a standard word, okay? Um, it's a horrible word. You would never say, how's your demented mother doing, right? You know? There was a famous movie, uh, Harry Potter, and they had a bad, evil character called the Dementor. Okay, so there is no argument to continue to use this discriminatory, inflammatory, pejorative term anymore. And degrading, degrading. Thank you, Sam. Degrading. There's no reason to even move it. And the question I get: Well, what are you going to replace it with? I have two answers. One is I don't really care. You know, um, the academics look at it from one way, insurance companies another way, 
researchers another way. But in our survey, we gave people a choice between um, dementia, Alzheimer's, cognitive impairment, and neurodegenerative disease, okay? The phrase most commonly um, picked as number one was cognitive impairment. Second was neurodegenerative disease. Third was Alzheimer's. And dead last was dementia. So we have landed on the use of the term cognitive impairment, major or minor, okay? Very, very simple. Um, everyone understands cognitive issues now, okay? That word sort of now become to the forefront, okay, of our, of, our, of our lexicon, okay? It's very simple, okay? I say like the Alzheimer's Association, not the Alzheimer's uh, banner, they have not, they have started implementing not using Alzheimer's and related diseases. I mean, Alzheimer's and related other other dementias, okay? Alzheimer's and related diseases. Mm -hmm. That's a simple, tiny little fix. Big, you know? but it's, and it's yeah. not only tiny, but in many ways it's big. Yeah. Every well, change. Yeah, yeah. Every it doesn't require a lot. So that's what we're doing is we're trying to create awareness for this and then trying to get these major groups like the Alzheimer's Association and other groups to come aboard with this. And, 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 and they're all interested. They're all very, very interested because no one has ever attacked it on this basis. They did have, here's something very interesting. About four or five, six years ago, they did have a nomenclature group of about 30, 40 of the best researchers and, and people involved in this um, get together. Okay, They got together for two and a half years. And at the end, they couldn't agree on a substitute term, so they did nothing except to say, we're not going to use the word demented. So that's why I did not want to get together a big group and have two years of meetings and, and talk about it. I have a small, a mighty, powerful group, and we're growing bigger by the day, and we're going to make the change. And people have told me it's going to take a decade. I'm giving myself 24 months to 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 make make this change and our initial initial reaction has been overwhelmingly supportive every, every, I, so in, i spent 15 years as a member of the board of the world institute on disability and i've spent time with you know with giants in that are the early stages of that movement and I'm trying to be in touch with them again. It's changed over time. I don't, you know, unfortunately, the people I was dealing with have passed away, uh, at least some of them. But I think they are major supporters and will be of this movement. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I I think it's important to get the, the corporate and big organizations online. But I also think it's hopefully we can get um, a lot of the grassroots and disability advocates and others who also, um, you know, the word cripple, you know, you're a crip. That's right. Things like that have, were there early and have, and are gone. And I, I know that that community also, uh, I've heard a little bit of a concern, not to throw this into the mix of that. A lot of these patient groups are getting sort of atomized and there's so many of them and it's hard to organize them. And many use um, dementia in their titles. Uh, we need to also address that too. But I just want to focus on and appreciate the energy and your commitment to it. And to say that I'm on your team, anything we, uh, I say we, I'm just a guy, I have my, I have a one man show. Uh, I want you to see it. And uh, it, imagine, it's contra to a couple of things, the tragedy narrative. It, it argues you can leave, live a meaningful life with this disease. I want to get rid of the D word. Um, and I'm um, hoping that I can just be another voice out there. Uh, and I will use my podcast and I keep, uh, you know, been, I find, you know, I, had a, about, a, about a year and almost a year and a half, and I've performed over 50 times now. 
but I just want to be another voice in your work and add in any way I can help. And I would urge anyone who sees this. So we let, let's go back. I'm going to try to share the uh, page of the website here. If I can make sure it, where is it? It's not up there right now. I'm going to um, uh, go back to it, go back here and see if I can do that. But Give us a name and and the, the the name of it again. The website is is a great name, and when we found out this was available, I was really really happy. But the website is notdemented.com. I love that. Notdemented.com. I my kids want me to wear a shirt that says "I am not demented." <laughs> Not and I, I just might, when I go my next conference I go to, I think I'm going to walk around with that shirt and see what kind of reactions I get, you know. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to share this real quick. And there you are. Do you see yourself? Oh, there we go. Golly, <laughs> yeah. And that's your team. Yeah. Um, We're just starting to build it out. We're just starting to build it out. We have about four other people who we don't have their bios up because they're just now in the process. Sure. Of something like and it's the initiative to change the D word. Yeah. To change the word cognitive impairment, uh, world of cognitive impairment. And that's what I, that's the word I would have done too. Uh, it, it means it, it seems so common sense. Um, you know, um, you, you have a, um, um, but uh, the a broken femur, you you and you. So you're, I think that's in your leg, or you got a, a bad knee. So you use a walker. You're not uh, crip. You're not a crippled person, you right? Know. Um, yeah. And so we're not crippled. We're, there's so many change. There's so many ch ch changes right now. Um, we don't uh, in the medical world. We don't use the word um, manic depressive. Right. We use bipolar disease. Okay. Uh, very, very simple. We don't refer to people as crippled. God, goodness gracious. We don't call kids retarded, you, you know, but yet they call my parents demented, you know, and I resent that. And I, 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 I'm, this is my mission now. And um, it's just a small thing, but if we can get people with early detection, that's yeah. their only hope to get treatment. Right. So yes. if they're afraid to be, they say, well, I'm fine now. The problem with this disease is by the time it becomes very impair apparent, chances are somewhat good that there may not be any treatment for you because all the medications are only meant for people very, very early or even before we're in the new age. We've already, we're already started the new age of prevention. So, so, so my, Mike, can I ask you a, a personal question? You don't have yes. to answer did you know that you do you have the uh, APOE4 gene genetic? Oh yes, I ha I have I have both APOE4 genes. So you have two. I have oh. two, and my daughters each have one. Okay, yeah, this is I have, I, personal. I have one. I have one, and it was funny. I did twenty three me really early because I've been a tech, early adapter to technology in my life, and it had that line said you have one instance of APOE4. Slightly higher risk of uh, Alzheimer's. I didn't, it just went by me. Today, if I, and I tell it to anybody, if you've got that, go now, get checked out. And of course, you may, you probably do know that there was a European study said if you have both two variant, two of the variants, you should be viewed as having Alzheimer's and treated yeah. or, or approached okay. yeah. because it's yeah. your risk goes up so much. Yeah, and, and just to add, and then I think you can build on what you said, because I run into it in my shows. Uh, I hear, I'm not going to get a check because there's no cure. What difference is, I don't want to know. Uh, you know, if I can't do anything about it, I don't want. So the, the, there is a very high wall in front of us to overcome, to get people on this issue of go get checked. Don't worry about it. And I make the argument because there may be something about you that's unique that will help us find cures for others and move it before. We don't know. And you can, um, and your, your evidence that early, early, 
Um, you can have significant with some of the newer drugs delays. I, I've not heard a story like yours before of having the amyloid, um, um, I don't know the right word, shrink or disappear so, you know, significantly. Removed. It's been removed. Removed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, <clears throat> that is, you know, that's amazing. Um, and I probably waited a bit too long for mine, um, you know, at 79. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, like most people, you know, you were, I did not have Alzheimer's in my family that I was aware of. Turns out I found out that my father's mother, my grandmother, my father's side comes from a family that I've since been connected with because of DNA that has significant Alzheimer's. And that's where I presume my single occurrence. I wish I could have known earlier and could have done things earlier. As you probably know, we can prevent 30% of Alzheimer's cases just with lifestyle changes. Okay, this is this is dramatic news. Okay, lifestyle changes, eat properly, exercise properly, re, re, uh, 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 be engaged. Okay, uh, another big thing that's come up uh, is hearing hearing loss. Okay, hearing loss can contribute to thirty percent of Alzheimer's symptoms. Okay, because if you can imagine, if your brain's not if you have hearing loss and your brain's not being stimulated by sound the way it normally is that part of the brain's gonna not be used and 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 you know have atrophy so there's all these normal healthy things that anyone can adopt tomorrow okay to prevent the disease so if you know you have it symptoms don't start sam you know this 15 to 20 years before symptoms become obvious is when the amyloid plaque starts forming in, in your brain. So you right. have this 15 yeah. to 20 year period of this this disease, you know, crawling all over your brain and you don't know it. That's and why, it, that's why yeah. early detection, early detection, early detection. That's, and there is treatment, there is treatment. And they say to you, and it was true to me, that once you find out, you can look back and see it coming. Yes. But at the time, you know, I and, and my favorite little one, it's not a big one, I mean, was, you know, I I had actually been a CEO of my own company. It wasn't a big, too, huge one, but I had like 50 employees and we had a decent budget. But I could sort of knew where, know where we were financially in my head, right? You see the numbers. And then I, I retired and I did my, I did my, um, oh, Sam, what's the word that, Counting package for people uh, every week. I just put my numbers into every Sunday. It'd be I do my. It's not day timer. It's something else. Uh, I seem like I can remember the word. But I had that. You know, just as accounting home accounting package. Yeah, and, yeah I know. I know exactly what you mean, Sam. And, I can't come up with the word either. <laughs> and so, so when I was diagnosed, I looked back and I realized that for a year, every Sunday, I said, "I'll get to it," and I didn't do it. I'll get to it. It'd been a year that I hadn't done it, but it was like, I'm just too busy. Right. And that really wasn't why. It just yeah. became, and now we out outsource our financial stuff and pay some other accommodation. But yeah. I really, you know, they say a half an hour on these things is maximum. We may have just, mi mi you know, for keep people's attention. Mike, I hope I can be of help to you. My invitation is, do you have anything I can do to be of help? Okay. Your thing, and I really appreciate. I think we'll reach to some people, and I encourage them to go and sign up and be on your list. And um, thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you, Sam, so much for what you're doing. Thanks for what you're doing, Sam. You're really creating awareness around the country, and um, 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 I appreciate that. Anybody who's doing anything yeah. to, to has the right motivation is a wonderful person. So. If anyone wants to go to notdemented.com, I would be more than pleased. And despite the title of my show, I'm not demented. I'm not demented either, Sam. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.